Hey, welcome to the 2017 Race for World Championship Series map pool quick looks for each of the 7 maps we will be using this year. Today we have Rain Eater, a map made by Zarpal. The map starts out with a standard spawn drop in the water, which leads to a spawn hut with various supply chests scattered on the ground, as well as some handy supplies in the trees. Players must make their way past a cobblestone fence and towards the first of many lakes. This lake contains the victory monuments spread throughout the three trees. Players need to be careful though, because the lake is littered with spider spawners and jumping silverfish spawners. After the first lake, we make our way to a chasm. This chasm serves as the first choke point, however players can choose to jump into the chasm to make their way to an iron and coal resource area, as well as the Great Burning Nullifier, the first wool dungeon. To access this area, players need to flip this lever to activate some TNT to expose the drop into the dungeon. For making it this far, players are rewarded with an iron block, however, there is a wooden button attached to some TNT, which the other team can shoot to destroy said block. The first wool dungeon is a PvP wool where players will face vertical sections, lava pools, and long drops while exposed to PvP pressure. After completing the first section, players get a quick break from the PvP pressure, however, they must deal with mobs coming from spawners as well as potential natural spawns. After that, players must face more vertical sections, more lava pools, and more spawners while being exposed to PvP pressure. However, once the last section is finished, players are rewarded with the green wool as well as the bow of Pi, the Mercury God of Infinity. Back on the surface, crossing the chasm leads to the Ruin Village. These houses contain various supplies ranging from enchanted tools to blocks to food to combat gear. Halfway through the village we reach a pyramid which leads to the main resources. This resource complex contains a plethora of supplies which includes iron, gold, lapis, TNT supplies, and potion supplies. This resource complex is not completely bedrocked off, so it is possible to tunnel through some of the sections. Past the village, we encounter another lake, with a temple in the middle. This temple is home to the second wool dungeon, a shrine to madness. This brutal PvE wool is filled with traps, spawners, and plenty of silverfish that all stand in the way of the wool box. The dungeon gets progressively more difficult as players get closer to the wool, starting off with a small amount of spawners, and ending with a final room filled with armored mobs, witches, and cave spiders, among other things. Braving this PvE wool will reward players with the brown wool. For the most part, this dungeon is blocked off from the opposing teams who do not expect much PvP pressure in this wool. After the second wool, we have the entrance to the diamond mine. This cave is filled with spawners, so the path to the diamonds is not easy, but conquering this small dungeon grants players access to the only diamond resources on the map. After the diamond cave, we make our way to the newest addition to the map. This miniature rainforest replaces the old shared lane. This area is dark and filled with spawners, so conquering this area will not be easy. After the forest, we have the Whomping Willow, which is home to some nasty cave spiders. Underneath the willow, we have a few barracks, which contain some miscellaneous supplies. After the willow, we have a small ruin, which is littered with spawners. At the end of the map, we have the third wool dungeon, Malenchantments of the Necrosphere. This mixed PvP and PvE dungeon requires players to flip six levers scattered throughout the dungeon. These levers are guarded by various spawners, and for the most part are all exposed to PvP pressure from the other side. Flipping all six levers will remove the bedrock in front of the wool box and grant access to the black wool. This has been a brief and quick look at Rain Eater. Click here to watch our previous map tour of Procession by Raptos, or click here to go to the playlist containing all of the map tours for the 2017 Race for World Championship Series. This has been a quick look at all of the maps in the tournament. Stay tuned for matches on these seven maps.